We're going to read three passages from the books of Acts. I'll read in Cantonese while the English translation is on the screen. 诗林传第十一章第十九节开始，那些因使提反的事遭患难四散的门徒，直走到腓利基和居比路，并安提阿。他们不向别人讲道，只向犹太人讲。但内中有居比路和古利内人，他们到了安提阿，也向希利利人传讲主耶稣。主與他們同在，信而歸主的人就很多了。這風聲傳到耶路撒冷教會的人的耳中，他們就打發巴拿巴出去，走到安提摩為止。他們到了那裏，看見神所賜的恩，就歡喜，勸勉眾人立定心志，行久靠主。這巴拿巴原是個好人，被聖靈充滿，大有信心。於是有許多人歸服了主，他又往大數去找數羅，找着了就帶他到安提摩去。他們足有一年的功夫，和教會一同聚集，教訓了許多人。門徒稱為基督徒，是從安提摩起手。當那些日子，有幾位先知從耶路撒冷下到安提摩，內中有一位名叫阿加布站起來。直著聖靈指明天下將有大饑荒，這是到甲魯雕年間果然有了。於是門徒內定定義，照各人的力量捐錢送去供給住在猶太的弟兄，他們就這樣行，把捐項託巴拿巴和素羅送到眾長老那裏。跟住係第十三章。在安提阿的教會中有幾位先知和教師，就是巴拿巴和稱呼尼傑的西面古利內人路求，與分封王、分封之王希律同樣的馬念並數落。他們侍奉主，禁食的時候，聖靈說：要為我分派巴拿巴和數羅去。作我照他們所作的功，於是禁食禱告，按手在他們頭上，就打發他們出去了。第十五章，有幾個人從猶太下來，教訓弟兄們說：你們若不按摩西的律法的規條受割禮，不能得救。保羅、巴拿巴與他們大大的紛爭辯論，眾門徒就定規叫。保羅、巴拿巴和本會中幾個人為所辯論的，上耶路撒冷去見使徒和長老。於是教會送他們起行。他們經過腓利基、撒瑪利亞，隨處傳說外邦人歸主的事，叫眾弟兄都甚歡喜。到了耶路撒冷，教會和使徒並長老都接待他們。他們就述說神同他們所行的一切事。唯有幾個信徒是法利賽教門的人，起來說：必須給外邦人行割禮，吩咐他們遵守摩西的律法。願神賜福遵行佢説話嘅人。May God, may God bless all those who listen to the word of God. Please be seated. 請坐。Good evening. 大家晚安。I'm thankful to be back again this evening. I'm surprised you came back. <laughs> this is always the risk of preaching two services. <laughs> if you just preach one, people come to see if you're a, a novelty. <laughs> But if you preach two, it always makes the speaker nervous. <laughs> so thank you for coming back tonight. <laughs> If you were not here last evening, let me give a brief review of what we're studying. I'm teaching you about the most important church in the New Testament. The church at Antioch. Why do I say this was such an important church? Well, for several reasons. 
First, this was the first church that started among the Gentile community. And because the church in Antioch started, you are able to be here tonight. That makes this a very important church. It's also the church that did many things the first time. The Christians or the believers were first called Christians in Antioch. The church uh, Antioch was the first church that received a relief offering. Antioch was the first church that sent out missionaries. And so we see this is a very important church. If you are going to accomplish your theme, if you're going to strengthen your faith, sharpen the presentation of the gospel, and lengthen the, the, uh, the influence of God's kingdom, you will do that by building stronger churches. And so it is important to study a strong church so that we can make the changes necessary so that our churches are like the church at Antioch. And if you are a church planner here tonight, you are most blessed. Because the Bible gives you a model of a church of, of a church plan. And, and shows you how it can grow to strength. Now last night we learned two important principles about the church in Antioch. First, we learned that uh uh did we learn last night? <laughs> the Holy Spirit. I remember the second one. We learned the Holy Spirit empowers the church. <laughs> and we learned the church must change to advance the gospel of faith. And now I've forgotten what I wanted to say tonight. <laughs> so we will have the closing prayer just now. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming back to me. <laughs> Tonight I'll teach you two more principles about the church in Antioch. And the first one is this. The church that changes its world makes disciples, not just converts. Antioch was a great teaching church. Let me show you from scripture how this church developed its teaching ministry. It's important to understand this because teaching is the primary means of making disciples. In the Great Commission, Jesus told us to baptize. But he also told us to teach. I recently had to confess to my school that I have preached many messages on evangelizing and challenged our students to go around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I have not preached as many messages on being a teaching church. This is also important. And so tonight we consider this model of Antioch. A teaching church that made disciples. We see how the teaching ministry started. Barnabas arrived from Jerusalem. And as I told you last night, he immediately left town. Barnabas took the first step of launching the teaching ministry. He went to Tarsus and, and uh, brought Paul back to work with him. Now Barnabas was doing this, Barnabas, uh, did this, uh, Barnabas brought Paul before he started the teaching ministry. This tells us how important it is to have the right people involved in the leadership. The, the Bible says Paul and Barnabas taught the church for a whole year. Now that puzzles me. 
这让我有点思考。For many years, I understood the verse this way. 许多年来，我对这节经文的认识是这样。Paul and Barnabas arrived and taught the church. 保罗跟巴拿巴来到教会，他要教导教会的会众。And in the second week, they taught the church. 第二周他们又教导这个教会。And the third week, they taught the church. 第三周他们也来教导教会。And then I realized it didn't happen that way at all. 但是后来我明白，并不是这样的发生。What does it mean that Paul and Barnabas taught the church for a whole year? 那圣经说他们两位在教会教导一整年是什么意思呢 ？I think it means they were progressively teaching the church. 我想他们是以进展式的在教导教会。So on the first week, Paul taught the church. 所以第一周他是保罗在教导。But the Bible says many people were being added to the Lord. 但是圣经上说许多人就加入了教会。So the second week, Paul taught the church that was two weeks old. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old Christians. But he also had to teach the one-week-old I hope not. I think you understand the concept. The teaching ministry was a progressive ministry. They, had new, they were constantly winning new people to faith in Jesus Christ. So they were always teaching the young converts. Always teaching those who've been Christians for a few weeks. And then teaching those who've been Christians for a few months. This is so significant for developing the teaching ministry of your church. Do you understand there are people in your community who don't do not know how to open the Bible? You know, in our community, there are people who have no understanding of anything about the Bible. There are people who have no understanding of anything about the Bible. There are people who have no understanding of anything about the Bible. There are people who have no understanding of anything about the Bible. There are people who have no understanding of anything about the Bible. There are people who have no understanding of anything about the Bible. There are people who have no understanding of anything about the Bible. There are people who have no understanding of anything about the Bible. There are people who have no understanding of anything about the Bible. And they are reluctant to enter into Bible study because they don't know enough to even open the Bible. When I moved to Portland, Oregon, to plant my church in 1989, we started reaching out into our community. And we found many people who had no understanding of the Bible. These were well-educated people, professional people. But no understanding of the Bible. That 对圣经一无所知 One couple came to visit our church. 有一对夫妻来拜访我们教会 Their names were Steve and Michelle. 他们叫做 Steve 和 Michelle. They came at the invitation of a friend. 他们是因为一个朋友邀请他们才来的 They had never been to a church before. 也从来没上过教会 They were、uh, mid thirties in age. 他们大概三十多岁 She owned her own business. He had a responsible job. They were well-educated, competent people. No understanding at all of the Bible. After they visited our church for、uh, two weeks, I asked if I could come to visit their home. They said we'd like that. We have some questions we want to ask you. So I went to their home. Before I said anything, I wanted to say I asked. What are your questions? In my talking to them, I asked them, "Do you have any questions?" They looked at each other. 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 They looked at each Here's my question. What's a testament? <laughs> What's a testament? Do you understand there are people who come to your church from your community who don't know anything about the Bible, not even what is the Old Testament from the New Testament? So you understand your church has many people who don't know what is the Old Testament, what is the New Testament, what is the New Testament. Pastors, I challenge you to understand that not everyone knows the Bible like you do. So, 牧师们啊，我要你知道，不是每个人都像你那样明白圣经。And it's not your responsibility to uh, to uh, to water down or weaken the message. 
But it is your responsibility to make sure everyone in your church, everyone can access the Bible's information. This means you'll need classes for people who don't know anything about the Bible. When I was a church planter, I had a class called Discover the Bible. It lasted four weeks. And I taught it three or four times a year. We started the first class this way. This is the Bible. <laughs> this is an Old Testament. This is the New Testament. These are the books of the Bible, and these are how the numbers in the Bible work. And almost every person who joined our church, including some, some people who've been believers for a long time, signed up for that class. When you've been a Christian a long time, it's easy to forget that not everyone knows the Bible like you do. Many people today did not grow up going to Sunday school or vacation Bible school. So I challenge you to build your teaching ministry from the beginning to the advanced. And to, and to recognize when Paul and Barnabas taught the church for a whole year, they were teaching the church progressively week by week by week. Now, a second important part of this teaching ministry is who was the, uh, was who the people. Uh, a second important part of the teaching ministry is who the people were that became Christians. 就是那些成为基督徒的人是谁? And how rapidly they grew in their faith in Jesus Christ. Do you understand that these people were had no remember no background in God or the gospel? Remember, remember Antioch was a pagan city with no no worship of God. <coughs> and these Christians started changing very rapidly. We're going to see in just a few minutes some of the remarkable things they learned how to do. Because of this teaching ministry. Now, when I read that they had a teaching ministry for a whole year, because I'm a seminary president, I ask this question. What was in the curriculum? The Bible does not tell us. But I am a Baptist preacher. I will preach 30 minutes on it anyway. That was supposed to be funny. <laughs> but I think you all know the preachers. <laughs> what did they learn? What were, what were they teaching and what did the people learn? Well, since the Bible doesn't tell us the curriculum, how can we discover it? Because I am a seminary president, I can tell you the answer. You see, schools work hard on their curriculum. At Golden Gate Seminary, our faculty work very hard on the whole curriculum. They want all the classes to fit together. And they spend long hours discussing something called learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are what the students are supposed to know when the class is over. And this may surprise you about our school. We measure what we measure what students learn and grade ourselves as a school on how effective the job we're doing. We believe you can look at what a student has learned and then see what they've really been taught. 
而知道老师到底教了什么。So what did these brand new Christians learn at Antioch, and what were they able to do? 所以这些新的基督徒在安提亚到底学到什么，而且他们又做了什么呢 ？Well, you you just said we look at the stories that were read to you earlier tonight. 刚刚我们读过这一段圣经。Immediately after the teaching ministry, the very first story is of a worship service. 在他们教导一年之后，我们读到的第一就是他们有一个很好的崇拜。Now I preached about this service last evening, so I won't repeat it all tonight. 那昨天晚上我提到他们的崇拜怎么被圣灵充满。But just to review what happened in the service. 好，但是我稍微回顾一下。A guest speaker was invited. 啊，他们请了一个外来的讲员。<laughs> so you're doing something very biblical tonight. Ah, 你们做的也是合乎圣经的。A guest speaker was invited. 啊，请了一个外来的讲员。His name was Agabus. 他叫雅加布。He stood and preached a sermon. 他站起来讲道。The Spirit empowered the hearers to respond. 圣灵赐给会众听的能力，使他们能够回应。And they gave an offering. 他们就有奉献。But even more specifically, the Bible says that each one gave proportionately of what they had. 但圣经提到一个特点，就是说每一个人按照他们所能的大方的奉献。Now so far, this sounds so routine. 那这个听起来非常的像例行公事。They had a worship service. 他们有一个崇拜聚会。Routine. 这是例行公事。They invited a guest speaker. 他们请了一个外来的讲员。You do that all the time. 我们常常这么做。The preacher preached. The people responded. They received an offering. This sounds like a service that you have at your church, doesn't it? This is like our church service, isn't it? But I have this question. But I have this question. How did the people in Antioch know to do these things? Antioch 教会的会众怎么知道要做这些事情呢 ？You say, well, they learned it by going to church. 你说他们是因为上教会就学到了 ？No. 不是的。There was no church before this one. 好，在这之前没有其他的教会做他们的榜样。Worship for them meant going to a temple. 他们以前的敬拜是到圣殿去。Sacrificing an animal. 在那边献上一只动物。Or joining in a sexual act. That's what worship meant to them. But now they're coming to Jesus Christ by faith. But 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 they're coming See, we've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget how powerful it is to teach people how to worship. We've been doing this so long, we forget Five different people are mentioned. 有五个名字提到 They were ministering to the Lord and fasting. 他们是服侍主进食 I ask you the question: How did they know to fast? 那我又问你，他们怎么知道要进食呢 ？You should know the answer by now. 你现在应该知道答案了 The teaching ministry of the church. 是因为教会教导的缘故 How did they know to gather and minister to the Lord? 他们怎么知道要聚在一起服侍主呢 ？The teaching ministry of the church. 也是教会教导的施工 And here's what's even more amazing. They already had five teachers listed in the story. In this story, they already had five teachers listed in the story. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking place. They already had a shared teaching ministry that was taking So here's what I'm appealing for tonight. So today 晚上我请求大家 I'm appealing for you to take seriously your responsibility to be the teaching church. 我很严重的请请求大家使你的教会成为一个教导的教会 And to recognize that brand new converts. 而且要认出你们当中的新信徒 If they are taught properly. 假如他们适当的被教导 And they are taught sequentially. 而且渐进的被教导 Can learn many new things about the Christian faith. 他们可以对基督教的信仰有更多更多的认识 And especially church planters, listen to this. 特别是拓堂的牧师们 In a very short time. 在非常短的时间之内 In just a in just a few months. 在几个月之内。
A church can be established that looks like a Christian church. Comprised of people who just a few months before were completely lost with no reference to God or the gospel. But there's even more. Because the third story after the teaching ministry starts is the is the meeting of the church at Antioch with the church at Jerusalem. Remember when Barnabas came to Antioch from Jerusalem? <laughs> Barnabas came as, a, as, a, as an inquisitor or an investigator. Later he became an encourager. There was tension between the churches. The tension was over the nature of the gospel. In, in Jerusalem, the Judaizers were in leadership. They were teaching that before you could become a Christian, you had to first be circumcised and become a Jew. But in Antioch, people were coming to faith in Jesus Christ by faith, by grace through faith. No circumcision. No human, inter, uh, no human intervention. Salvation by grace through faith. Now I have no way to prove this. But I believe what Paul was teaching in Antioch. He later wrote in a letter to the Romans and sent it to their church. Those ideas that Paul wrote in Romans that are so deep and so powerful and so meaningful. I believe they were first developed in the teaching ministry in Antioch. For very early in the history of the Church of Antioch, after only about a year of teaching ministry, the conflict over the gospel became so intense that the Antioch Christians selected a group. Paul and Barnabas led, but the Bible says others from the church in Antioch accompanied them on their trip. The church in Antioch sent a delegation to Jerusalem to stand up to the Jerusalem church ten years older than them and decide once and for all the doctrine of salvation. I'll not preach all that happened in that story in Acts chapter 15. But the conclusion is important. The gospel was decided. Salvation by grace through faith with no other human participation. Who won the battle? The first doctrinal battle in the church. Seminary professors? Seminary presidents? <laughs> Leading pastors? Denominational executives? No, 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 and no! The battle over the doctrine of salvation was won by the Antioch Christians one year after their conversion. They had learned enough to stand up for the truth. To defend it against the Church of Jerusalem's leaders. And once and for all to settle the doctrine that now comes down to the ages. Do you understand how powerful the teaching ministry in Antioch really was? Men and women, boys and girls, without any knowledge of God, with no understanding of the gospel, with no Bible, nothing but temple worship and paganism in their background, come to faith in Christ, come together to be taught, 
And in a year's time, they're having Christian worship services. They're singing. They're hearing preaching. They're praying. They're giving offerings. They're hearing the Holy Spirit. They're sending out work, uh, missions teams. They're sharing the teaching ministry among, uh, among several pastors. And they're believing, and they and they have developed a doctrine that stands for the. the that stands up to the pressures of other churches. All, all of this resulted from the teaching ministry of the church in Antioch. The sad reality in the American church is that so few American Christians can stand up, can articulate the doctrines of our faith. So few of them understand the reasons behind our worship. And the reason is because we have failed in the teaching ministry of the church. So I challenge you tonight. I challenge you to rise up. With a fresh commitment to being the teaching church. And to understand you have a responsibility to teach everyone who comes to your congregation. Today I had a nice fun conversation with my wife. She is a beautiful woman. <laughs> I love her very much. We've been married 32 years. Thinking of her makes me smile. <laughs> she's writing a paper. She's a, semi she's a seminary student. She will graduate in December. She will be the first student to ever be kissed by the president. <laughs> Everyone else gets a handshake. <laughs> She's going to get a kiss. <laughs> what is her paper about? <laughs> She's writing a paper on teaching infants and small children, babies and infants and, and toddlers in the church. <laughs> Do you have a strategy to teach everyone who comes to your church? Do you have a plan to teach the preschool children? The, the school age children. The teenagers who are developing. And may I say a word about teaching the teenagers today? So many churches expect so little and teach so sec so superficially to teenagers. Do you understand the challenging curriculum that teenagers are faced with in high school to prepare them for college today? And we come to the, and they come to church and receive so little challenge. Challenge them, to, challenge them to go deeply into God's word and to learn it. Their minds are ready to be taught. Teach them the word of God. And not only must we teach all ages, but then in our adult, in the adult community, we must teach at every level. There must be those introductory classes for the person who doesn't know very much. And then I challenge you to take to, to have advanced classes for people who are ready to study theology and Bible on a different level. And when you run out of everything you can teach them, send them to Golden Gate Seminary and we'll pick up from there. <laughs> if you are going to strengthen, sharp, and lengthen the ministry of your church, you must develop a teaching ministry that touches everyone. I, ch I challenge you to develop the teaching ministry of your church. Now the final principle I will teach you from Antioch is that a church that makes an impact gives itself away. There are two examples in this story of Antioch giving, uh, giving itself away. The first of these is the offering. 
I preached about it several times. So I'll not review the, the details. Except to remind you that the offering was given to help another church. Very early in the life of the church in Antioch. Jesus taught this principle. If you want to find your life, give it away. Do you believe that's true for you personally? That you find the deepest meaning in your life when you give your life away in serving others? If that principle is true for you as an individual, it is also true for your church together. Jesus said, if you want to find life, give your life away. When I planted our church in Oregon, I was committed to being a giving church from the very beginning. I wanted our members to understand we had a responsibility to help others. When we opened our church, we received some, some financial help from the from the Southern Baptist Convention. That financial help came from the North American Mission Board and the Northwest Baptist Convention. We were grateful for that help. But it was not enough to start our church. And so our, the, the few Christians who started our church also gave sacrificially. We barely had enough to, to, to rent a building and to pay, pay a salary. It was a very challenging time. There were some months that I would write my tithe check and give it to the church treasurer so he could give me my paycheck and it would not, <laughs> and it would not be insufficient. You understand? <laughs> we did not have extra money. Now I tell you that part of our story so that you'll understand this part more powerfully. Our church came together in June of 1989. We filed our paperwork with our state and were recognized legally in August of 1989. We we received our first offerings in July and August of 1989. We did not open our church for worship services until October of 1989. But in August of 1989, our church gave its first 10% of its offerings away for mission work in other places. We gave our money to the North to the uh, cooperative program of the Southern Baptist Convention. And some in the Northwest to help other churches that were getting started. From the very beginning, our church was a giving church. From before we had our first worship service, we were already giving money away for missions. Did we need that money? Yes. Did we need to give it away even more? Yes. A few months, excuse me, a few years after we started our church, we still had very little money. When a Hispanic pastor came to visit me, he said, I've been, I'm starting a new church in your area. And the North America and the, the Southern Baptist Convention would like to help us financially. But before they will help us, we need a local sponsor who will also help us. We need a local church. Excuse me, we need a local church to give us some money uh, so that the, 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 the denomination will match the funds. 
，我们需要的本地的教会支持我们一些钱，那么美南基金会就可以相对的给他们的支持。In fact, more than match, they would give a lot more, but they still needed a local church to give the first. 他们会给多一点哈，但是本地的教会必须先支持他们。So I asked the pastor, how much do you need? 所以我问牧师，你需要多少钱呢 ？He said we would like to ask you for one hundred dollars per month. 他说一个月给我们一百块。That is not very much money. 那不是很多。But it's a lot if you don't have a hundred dollars. <laughs> we had very little money. I'm still some months giving my time, giving my time check so I can get my paycheck. So I went to the deacons. And I said we have received this request. So, 有一天为我们做这个请求 And one of the deacons asked this question. 那执事长会一位问这个问题 He said, Jeff, do we have a hundred dollars a month to give away? 他就问我说 Jeff 啊，我们有没有可以给出的一百块呢 And an answer came to my mind. 然后一个回答就进到我的脑子里 I now, I, I believe now the, the, this thought was from the Lord. 我想这个想法是来自上帝的 And this is what I said. 我就这么说 This one hundred dollars. 我说这个一百块 If we give it away, we'll never miss it. 假如我们给出去了呢，我们就不会想念它 If we don't give it away, God will see to it we never get it. 但是如果我们不给出去的话呢，上帝就会让我们永远得不到这一百块 We agreed that night to commit one hundred dollars per month from our church's budget to that church start. 所以那天晚上我们就决定在教会的预算当中拨一百块钱给这个西班牙教会 Another year went by. 好，又过了一年。Our church is about three years old. 我们教会大概三年了。We've been giving our missions money every month. 每个月我们都有拆船奉献。We've been helping the Spanish church get started. 也帮助这个西班牙教会开始。When a man came to visit our church, 有一个人来到我们教会聚聚会。He seemed, uh, seemed a rather normal, normal dress. 啊，很普通的一个人。Usually wore jeans to church. 好，穿着牛仔裤来教会。A work shirt. 好，一个工作服。He came several Sundays. 来了几个礼拜。He asked for an appointment to see me. 有一次他要跟我约会谈。Came to my office and said. 他来到我的办公室说。I really, I really admire your church. 呃，我很佩服你的教会。I am particularly impressed by your commitment to missions. 我特别为你对拆船奉献呢，非常的印象深刻。I became a Christian ten years ago in a Southern Baptist church. 十年前我在一个美南浸信会信了主。The church had some problems and I left the church. 教会有些问题，所以我就离开了。But I've always wanted to be a part of a Southern Baptist church again because of your commitment to missions. 但是我一直想要做美南浸信会的会友，为什么？因为你们对宣教很认真。So I heard about your church. 所以我听说你的教会。I've been visiting you. 所以我来过几次了。I'm impressed with your missions commitment. 好，我对你们对拆船的这个献身呢，非常的非常印象深刻。Our family is going to join the church. 我们一家人要加入你的教会。It would be inappropriate for me to tell you the amount. 好，那我把他奉献的数字告诉你不太好。But he was worth millions of dollars. That 他这人大概是一个百万富翁 And over the next five years, 他在之后的五年 gave our church 他奉献给我们教会 very very large gifts 非常非常大的金钱 made it possible for us to build a campus that's worth over six million dollars 是我们可以有一个整个校园哈，它值六百万 supported missions and mission teams 好，它支持宣宣教支持宣教团队 and stood by us in many different ways to help our congregation 在许多方面呢都支持我们的教会能够成功 Jesus was right 耶稣是对的 you give your life away He will give you your life back. He will give you your life back. Jesus said, "Give it shall be given to you." He said, "Jesus said, 有给的就必有给你的 Good measure, shaken down, running over. 像升斗一样量给你 That's what happened in our church. 在我们教会就发生了这样的事 I'm challenging you tonight to give yourself away. 所以今天晚上我向大家挑战，让自己舍弃。And I mean to give your money away. 我的意思是我把你的钱舍掉。Someone once said it's not always about the money. 有的人说哈，不是一直都讲钱了。But I say sometimes it is about the money. 哈，一定是讲钱的。So I'll speak plainly tonight. 所以今天我很明白的跟大家讲。I'm challenging you as churches to give your money away. 啊，作为一个教会，你要把你的金钱给送出去。Don't believe the devil's lie. 不要相信魔鬼的谎言。That says, oh, we must keep the money to build our own church. 我们必须把钱留下来，要盖我们自己的教会。And someday later, we'll help the other church. 好，所以以后我们可以帮助其他的教会。Start helping other churches now. 现在就开始帮助其他的教会。Give money away to support missionaries around the world. 把钱奉献出去做全世界的宣教工作。Give money away to help other churches get started. 好，把钱奉献出去帮助其他教会成立。
Give money away when you're not even sure you have enough to meet your own needs. And trust God to look out of heaven and smile. <laughs> Pastors like to say this. God blesses a generous giver. But they mean they want the people to give the money to their church. <laughs> it is true, God blesses a generous giver. But the principle works not just for individuals. The principle also works for churches. And may I also say it works for seminaries? A few years ago, I became convicted that Golden Gate needed to give itself away. Now, now, the Southern Baptist Convention prohibits us from giving away money for projects outside our own mission. And this is a good policy. We, we should be doing what we're supposed to do, which is education. But I still wanted to give something away. Because I believe that when we started giving, God would start blessing our school even more. And so we've launched partnerships with other seminaries around the world that need our assistance to grow stronger. We have a partnership with a seminary in Korea. The Taiwan Baptist Seminary. The Mexican Baptist Seminary. And we are in conversations with a seminary in India. And we started sending our professors to these schools. Paying their way to go there and teach on our behalf. And when we've been doing this, God has been pouring in the blessings. This year, 2012, has been the greatest single financial year in the history of our school. And it's not so much the president is a good fundraiser. <laughs> The president is not a good fundraiser. The president is a good gift giver. I like to give it away. And then watch God pour out the blessings. The church in Antioch gave itself away. They gave an offering to help another church. And I challenge you to do the same thing. But then finally, the church in Antioch gave away its best people. They sent Paul and Barnabas to be church planters. Now that does not mean you must send your pastors away to be church planters. <laughs> but it might. What does this principle mean though? This principle means that we must be willing to share the people and the human resources we have to help others in ministry. Again, let me tell you our story about planting our church. We started our, we started our church in 1989. And I, from the very beginning, wanted to give our people away to help other churches. I heard of another church that was starting in 1990. In Lewiston, Idaho. So I assembled our church. And I said, we're taking our first mission trip. So about 10 teenagers. And about six, five, six adults. Remember, we were a very small church. Attendance may be 60, 70 people. But we got the teenagers. We got some adults. And we went to Lewiston, Idaho in the summer of 1990 before our church was even one year old. We went, to we, went, we went there and did vacation Bible school in a park. And we knocked on some doors and shared the gospel. We invited people to come and be part of the new church that was being planted in Idaho. 
Why did we do this so seemingly such a small thing? Because, because from the very beginning I wanted our church to give its best people away to help other churches get started. And you know what happened. God started bringing more people to our church who wanted to do missions work for others. And our church now is over 20 years old, just, just 22 years old. Our church today has formal partnerships in India and in Africa. All summer long, this past summer, the church sent team after team after team to these mission sites in, a, in, a, uh, in support of their work. Beyond that, the church has sent out missionaries who've been called out of the congregation to go all around the world with the gospel. The church has given its people in, 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 short, in, in, in uh, local trips. The church has sent people around the world. The church has sent out missionaries to missions organizations around the world. And now recently a church closed in that city. And the Baptist asked, what do we do with the building? And the pastor said, let's give it to the Gresham Church, they know how to do missions. <laughs> And now, our church, and now our church has been asked to start a new church in that, that facility. Why? Because we have a reputation for giving people to help start churches. About three years ago, uh, our church wanted to start a church in another part of our area. And so the church brought in a, a church planter. And the pastor said to the church planter, You will preach in our church once per month for nine months. I want you to meet as many of our members as you can. And I want you to take all of them who will go with you to leave our church. You preach once a month and recruit them from the pulpit. You make friends with them in the hallways, in the classrooms, and you recruit them there. And I'm hoping that 30 or 40 of our best people will leave with you to plant a new church. And that is, exact, and that is exactly what happened. So I ask our pastor. Did the attendance go down? When those 30 or 40 people left, he said, no, it went up. God brought more people to our church because we gave those people away. So here's the church in Antioch. A model for church today. First, be filled with, be empowered with the Holy Spirit. Second, be willing to change to advance the gospel. Third, develop a teaching ministry that touches everyone. And last, give your money and your people away. There are many models for church today. There are conferences about this kind of church and that kind of church. There are books about all kinds of churches. Many of these are helpful. But I hold up the best model tonight. A biblical model. The church of Antioch. And I challenge every one of you to work hard to make your churches like the one I've described. Thank you and God bless you as you build your church.